Oh, hello. Okay, watch out. I'm zooming in. Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. Merry Christmas Eve. You too, Vicky. Oh, my goodness. Get all the chitter chatter, make sure everybody's working. I'm going to see if I can also watch myself on the big TV. No, I can't. I am getting everything set up. My internet had a hiccup, so I'm just reloading everything. Just give me a moment. How is everybody doing? As you can see, we're just going to sit and chat today. I've got my Santa embroidery out. I'm waiting on the mailman. He's just down the road. He's supposed to be bringing me a package today. It's one of you amazing people sent me a package and it's been taking him a long way around the United States and going on a little field trip and having a good time. But I thought working on the Santa would be appropriate since it's Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, Teresa, Kathy, Vicki, Sue, Becky. Hi, everybody. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Bridget, for those of you that are coming on the replay, we're just going to basically sit and hang out and chat with everyone. For those of us that have a moment in time right now that aren't really doing anything special, we're just going to hang out. I'm going to do a little embroidery if you guys want to sew and keep me in the background. Or if you have to knit or crochet or a project like I'm doing, an embroidery project. Maybe a little EPP hexy going on. We're just going to chat. I'm going to do the best I can to read any comment that I'm replying to. I, forgive me, I tend to forget, but I know it's going to take a while for the comments to come back up. So I want to make sure that if you're listening, you can just kind of put me in the background while you're working on maybe you're vacuuming or doing dishes or making cookies. You can just listen to us in the background, chitter chatter away. If the package comes to the porch, I will probably disappear for a moment just to go get it. I'm not really like worried about anything being out there, but once it's here, I kind of want to get it into the house. I am looking at two different monitors here. I've got my Chromebook and my tablet. One of them is dark and one of them is light. I hope you guys can see what's going on here. Quilting Bug 3, Diana, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all of those that are just kind of lurking and listening in the background and you don't really want to comment or you're too busy making a pie that you can't because your hands are full of pie stuff, pie crust. Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas to those coming in the future to listen to this. I hope you guys had a wonderful and safe holiday. Uh oh, Vicky. Well, go get your package and then come back and let us know what it is. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. What do I need? Oh, I would probably need a needle and some thread. There's my little, I have a separated zipper pouch. I made this a couple years ago, I believe. I don't know if I actually, I might have made a video for it. I know I have a whole playlist for all about doing embroidery, how to get it into your hoop. Someone did request a video on doing red work. So I know we're already getting out of Christmas because I was only putting like one extra video a week, but I'm going to continue that in January. I'm going to keep having extra videos. Whenever I have an idea and I have time, I'll go ahead and bring an extra one in for you guys. I still need to do knitting in the round, like a hat, and we're going to do red work. And I have a list. I also have a pen and paper ready today, and I have some little gummy snacks to snack on. I made a ham this morning and had a couple pieces of ham, but I haven't officially had lunch or anything. Merry Christmas Eve. I was going around telling, well, I was telling the cats yesterday, Merry Christmas Eve Eve, because, you know, they were the only ones here to listen to me. I'm 
doing this all in white as you can see which for me that is I'm using the Blanc there's one I think it's like zero 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 or something and that one tends to be a little creamier I think if I've got it right so this is the Blanc or the Blanco however it is I like to use beeswax I haven't found my needle of choice yet I haven't decided what needle is going to be best for me but as you can see I just have a bunch of them I like a nice sharp pointy one it doesn't need to be too long but I don't want to have a short quilting one either I'm thinking I'm, for some of the things I'm going to go back and get the one that has that split for the eyes so you can just drop the thread into it instead of trying to get it through the eye all the time there are some that are made specifically for embroidery type work that have a, a longer eye but it's not wider so it's still the same width as the needle you don't want to have a big hole when you're putting your thread through cut mine just a little bit longer than arm's length it's a little bit over a yard everybody's ready for Christmas everyone's got their things done it's been one of those years where I didn't have much to do so I felt really kind of a little bit off like here it is we're talking it's you know Christmas Eve and stuff and I'm not like working on any presents I'm not wrapping anything I'm not doing much of anything I'm just trying to check yep I'm using three threads so it's been really kind of calm and quiet here It came with my order from Hershner's. Did you want? Did you need a flip through? We can look through it real quick if you want. It, yeah, just it came with my order. I thought, oh, that's nice. A little dangerous, but it's like the toy catalog for kids, right? Sue's been baking up a storm. Several of you have been baking up a storm. I'm doing this completely wrong. You're supposed to pull one thread out at a time, but I don't care. I'm going to run it through the beeswax so it's going to straighten it out. Yeah, Hershner's has got some really big sales going on now, too, but I didn't look. Well, I looked a little, but I didn't stay for very long. There's nothing I absolutely need. I do want some felt stockings, but the sale wasn't really for those, and they were only like $5 off, and I don't consider that anything exciting. I'll probably look to see if Michael's and Joann's has anything. It's nice for anyone who gets to have the grandkids come over. I was watching the news, and for those of you that are overseas, I think it was they were saying that at the French border, there was so many, because they closed the border with that new strand of the virus over there, they closed the border down, and all the big semi-trucks got stuck there, and they couldn't cross the border. And they're not allowed to cross right now. Until, first, they couldn't cross at all. And then they're allowed to cross if they had a negative COVID test. But the thing is, is, they were saying there was 800 volunteers bringing them food. So if there's 800 volunteers, can you imagine how many trucks are stuck there at the border? It's terrible. I mean, I understand why it is and everything, but those poor truck drivers. Merry Christmas, Tracy. Yeah, for those of you that have grandkids that are used to seeing them and now you can't see them right now, especially at Christmas, I, 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 I can imagine it's got to be very difficult. I don't have any grandkids. I do. I thought, wow, that was really terrible. And being stuck there at any time and they're all lined up, I, I don't know. All I can think of is maybe other people in the company can get a negative test and then come and move the truck for them so that they can go home or whatever. Otherwise, they're going to have people going up and down the aisles doing the test right there in their truck. Oh, here's my mailman. Okay. 
Talk among yourselves for like a minute and a half. I need to go check to make sure that package has been delivered, okay? Hold on. Okay, all is safe. The package has made it safe and sound. I just got to go wash my hands. Boy, that's a relief. That was the last package that I'm aware of that's coming to the house. Yay. Aw, Sue, that's so sweet. She wants to sew just like Grandma. Right, Sue? Boy, <clears throat> now I'm a little out of breath because I kind of power walked. Steaks for Christmas. My son Justin said something about making meatballs in that, you make them with that jelly and stuff like that in the crock pot and all. So that's what we're having tomorrow, something to do with meatballs. I've got a ham, so. You know, I've got to the point where I'm kind of like, the kids want to try different things, and since they're the ones that are hosting it and cooking and all, I let them go ahead and try whatever they want. I just have to have my traditional stuff when I get home. Otherwise, it's just not even that it doesn't feel like Christmas. It's just, I, I got a 10 pound ham because it's kind of hard to get a small one. And that'll last me for months. So I'll be able to eat ham for a while. I'm still eating turkey from Thanksgiving. So what's everyone working on? Are you guys doing any little crafting right now with me or are y'all cleaning? I am working on the candy cane. I've got the stripes done on this one, it looks like. I think I need new eyeballs. Yeah, it's a whole different thing when everyone's going to be wearing masks inside the house now and all. But I mean, it's what you have to do, right? I think I would rather wear a mask than not go somewhere at all. Oh, yeah. I, I try to tell the eye guy, I'm like, okay, I do a lot of close-up work. I need to make sure my glasses... He's like, oh, you read a lot? I'm like, yeah, sort of, but I, I do a lot of embroidery. He let me show you what I do, you know, and I sew, and I'm, I'm like this far away for a lot of things. And then, of course, I need, I don't need to read when I'm watching TV. If there's little words somewhere, I just ignore them. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Brenda's looking through the Hershner's catalog. That could be dangerous. Are you circling all the things you want like I was thinking of doing? I haven't sat down to do that yet. Can you hear my neighbor's dog barking? He gets so excited. He just wants to, the people with the pool house behind me, they had a big party last night and I imagine they're gonna have another one tonight because they speak Spanish as far as I can tell and I know a lot of Spanish speaking people Oh, they celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve at like midnight versus what a lot of the Americans do on Christmas morning. 
So they have a whole bunch of decorations up. They're over there painting and stuff now, so I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, that's just a lot, Sue. This is a pretty big storm I've been watching come down and hit all the different places. Ooh, I like that, and I like that. Yep, yep, yep. I, I, I love that the websites, of course the websites have them, but you have a wish list, right? So you can put everything on your wish list, save it for later, come back and watch for a sale. Sue's the baby quilt queen. Pot holder. I'm making a pot holder. I forgot it was attached to this skein of cotton yard. I need to make a dishcloth. Yeah. I haven't been much in the mood for knitting on the dishcloths lately. I've kind of switched up a little bit. I'm thinking since New Year's Day is again on a Friday that um, Instead of doing a tutorial again, like I'm not doing a tutorial tomorrow, but you have a video, I'll do my, excuse me, <coughs> I'll do my what yarn projects I'm working on so you guys can see all the new things I've cast on. I've been a little bit into a lot of things. I'm just so happy that I finally cast on my sweater. With the pattern I'm doing, you start with the sleeve, so I've been using that as my gauge swatch to make sure it's going to be right. I had to switch needles a couple times, but it looks like it's going to be good. I found, I couldn't figure out, I couldn't remember where I put my snowman embroidery that I worked on before, but I found it today while looking for something else, because that's usually how it is. You go look for something else and you'll find that thing you haven't been able to find for a while. So I'm hoping to work on that this weekend. Get that embroidery finished up. Hmm. 12 to 18 inches of snow. They were saying this morning on the news that Minnesota was getting a ton of snow. I did start the sweater. You want to see a sneak peek, Brenda? Let me see where I put it. I'll show you just the sweater because I love it. I'm starting the one that just has the cables up at the top of the shoulders and stuff. So this is the quick and simple one. It's not like exciting looking, but I'm just happy to have started the sweater. So this is the color I'm using. This is a Brava Worsted Weight from Knit Picks in the color Current, like the Current Berry. It's going to be nice and toasty warm. <laughs> Try the other way. There we go. That's how a sweater works. So I'm loving the fit. It's fitting really nice, and it's got that nice tight. I did a twisted one-by-one one rib, so it's going to hold in there nicely. And then it's, I'm doing all the increases now, which technically, yeah, they'd be like this. So they're increasing all up along the bottom of the sleeve into the armpit area. So you're increasing every six rows, so I'm just keeping track. I was trying to do two at a time, but it was just too, I wasn't going back to work on it because it just, it was too much trying to get both of them at the same time. So I just switched to one. So I like it. It's really, it's nice and relaxing. I've been Doing that and a couple other things at night, giving each one its own turn. I lost my needle. Thank you, Sue. And then the other one I'll get started later. That is the one that's in the light blue denim. And that's the one that's really complicated that has a pattern through the whole entire thing. It's got tons of cables and everything like that. Brenda, it's... I want to say it's not that complicated, but you just have to learn a couple little things and get used to it. Do you crochet at all? It took me a little bit to learn. My problem was is I couldn't figure out, I didn't know how to fix my mistakes because at the time I didn't have access to all of the tutorials and such online. But now with online, it's so easy to find videos to learn from. 
I really like very pink knits. I like anyone that does that that's their main thing. That's all they do is teach knitting because they have the really good lighting and they have the good camera setups and they do everything. Do you hold your, are you right handed? So you hold a crochet hook in your right hand and your yarn in the left hand then? Because if so, you should be able to switch over to a continental knitter because you've got your hand sort of, for the little bit of crochet that you've probably been doing, you've got your hand used to holding the yarn and stuff like that. And I, I've seen a lot of different, a lot of the knitters are really into making granny squares right now. It's like the really big thing with their minis for the advent calendars and stuff, and they're doing a granny stripe blanket. And they seem to switch over to crochet real easy. So I think, you know, if you know how to crochet even a little bit, it kind of helps to switch over to knitting pretty easy too, in my opinion. Granny squares are relatively easy and you can do the granny squares with a double crochet. Wait, we're going knitting. Go the other way, Robin. So you could start with the dishcloths and you can just make them all knit and you don't have to learn how to purl right away. You don't have to increase or decrease. I like knitting for certain things. I like knitting for sweaters. There are some new crochet sweaters I've seen lately that look nice. They don't look all stiff because a lot of times crochet can be very, well, if you're very determined to learn, then I think you're going to get it. I mean, some people, when they learn to knit, they jump right into socks or something complicated because with socks, you're going to learn everything about knitting all in like one shot. And then other people start simple. I definitely suggest not knitting a scarf only because scarves are long, you know, they're five or six feet long and they just take forever. And it just, it just drives you crazy because you never really finished a project. When I knit, I get an extra piece of yarn in between one and two rows. I've gotten the extra piece shorter, but not rid of. Are you saying when you when you go to turn your row when you're knitting that there's extra yarn on the side? Let me show you. I don't know if you're going to be able to see because this is so dark. But I'm knitting Magic Loop. And sometimes if you're not careful, when you're going to switch from row to row, if your yarn is not orientated properly, it can get pulled up. And then you'll get two stitches there instead of one. So you need to make sure that there's only one there. I know that's a problem with a lot of new people. I've done that before where you start with 10 stitches on your row and before you know it, you have 15. I wish I could tell you I'm this magic person that can teach you how to knit, but I'm sorry, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to learn how to knit somewhere else and I might be able to help you with some little things. I've, I've mastered crocheting years ago. It's, it's all different now. They've got all new different stitches and techniques and stuff, which is no big deal. I'll pick those up soon too. But oh, neighbors are making noise. But knitting, I just, I can follow the basic pattern and do what I'm told, but I can't really improvise or anything like that. Now with crochet, I love to make the amigurumi, the stuffed animals. That's my favorite with crochet. I tried crocheting socks, but again, those are just, they're too stiff. I like the fabric from knitting. It's nice and flexible and flowing usually. Not an extra stiff, just a loop. You'll master it once you figure out exactly what's causing it. Your last stitch just might be a little too loose. Yeah, a lot of times that's too, it could just be tension issues. You can't hear the neighbors? Good. I just hear like metal crashing and I think, oh my God, did the cats knock down the screen door for the back porch? You know, I don't want the cats to get loose or anything like that. So it, it always stops my heart for a second. Like, oh no, what do the cats got into? Did they knock something over? They're a little upset with me because I baked my ham this morning and they can smell the ham everywhere in the house, but I wouldn't give them any. 
I don't mind them having a little bit of ham or a little chicken or turkey, but they have to wait until dinner tonight. I don't want to give it to them now because they're going to want it again then too. Normally we just make ham sandwiches for Christmas, but I think I'm going to go all out and make mashed potatoes and a veggie. And we'll see, I might even make a loaf of bread today. I saw a recipe for a no yeast bread that I want to try. It's kind of like an Irish soda bread, but instead of baking soda, it's baking powder, I believe. I'll have to look at the recipe. But it sounded interesting, and I wanted to see how it is without any of the yeast in it. Plus, you can have bread like instantly. It only takes like three minutes to make and then you bake it in the oven, of course, but there's no kneading to it. You just kind of mix it. What time supper? Well, if you can be here by like, well, I didn't have lunch today, so supper might be a little early. I'm thinking probably about four or five o'clock. You know, when the kids and I, when we have dinner tomorrow, I'll go over probably about 10, 10.30. And we'll have dinner around 1, 2 o'clock, probably closer to 1. And then I'll come home around 4. And I might even be that crazy person tomorrow, depending on how I feel, I might take Christmas down. I've been known to take Christmas down on Christmas Day. There's nobody else here, and, you know, I've enjoyed the Christmas decorations all this time now. I've had them up since just after Thanksgiving. And at this point, I'd rather spend a little bit of time on Christmas Day evening taking them down than taking it down on the next day when I could be using that time to be in the craft room working on something. Yeah, I know. It would be really fun to have a big meetup with anyone in any channel. I think it's really cool. A couple years ago, I saw a lot of channels. They were doing the different meetups at coffee houses or the homesteading channels would go to someone's farm. I thought that was always kind of cool. I like to hear everybody's voice. I can only imagine you right now. Y'all have my voice. Because as I'm reading them out loud, y'all sound like me. Yeah, one giant retreat. Because who, who is it? The Bonnie Hunter. I haven't seen her on her channel in so long, and I don't go on Facebook. She did, she made that whole did like a post office over or a, a house or a cabin or something and turned it into a retreat. And then all this craziness hit this year. So she was never able to do anything, I don't think. She had a really great idea of having everyone come over and sewing together and stuff. Then everybody can have a big scrap swap. Bring all the fabrics you're tired of looking at. Cause if you're like me and you're sewing scraps, you're seeing the same fabrics day after day, month after month. It's kind of nice to swap them up and change them around a little bit. So do we have anyone here from out west? Is it just the eastern side of the states that are getting toppled with snow right now. Oh, she was able to get a couple of groups in? Yeah. I loved following along and listening to how she decided and what she was going to get and all that stuff. I really miss her. I never watched her live streams live when she was just sewing and chatting with people. I always caught them afterwards because I think she had them on Facebook but I enjoyed them. No, surprisingly, this is Dollar Tree fabric. This is a fat quarter from the Dollar Tree. It has some different blends. It's a little darker stuff. It's like someone 
dyed it and it's not dyed completely through and I have I have um, stabilizer interfacing on the back but yeah no this is from the Dollar Tree I like it's got dark spots like water stains and lighter patches the actually this is softer the one from my blender haul is the red fabric is really stiff in that one I took a little piece off to try to see if it was gonna bleed or anything and it didn't bleed so that was really great clear and windy here in Kansas Brenda is it true that it's windy in Kansas a lot I mean I know everyone has all these stories and stuff but Always heard Kansas gets a bit windy because you're flat, right? Toledo, Ohio is windy and rainy. I have big white giant clouds with some blue sky between. The clouds are moving pretty quick. They're getting a little dark. We have everything you guys are getting up north that is having all that snow and stuff. It's coming down and hitting us tonight. We should get some rain. And then right now it's 80 degrees and it's going to drop down into the low to mid 50s for tomorrow. We haven't had a Christmas that was this cold, and I mean, I know 50 degrees isn't cold, but for us it is, and we haven't had anything this cold since the 90s. Our Christmas days are usually beautiful around 74. Virginia's got rain. Becky, are you going to have any of that snow, or are you just on the rainy side of it? Five inches of snow yesterday morning, clear skies, bright and sunny, but a little windy and drifty. 34. Now, five inches, five inches is okay, right? That's for someone who gets snow a lot, five inches isn't too bad. That doesn't like stop the town or anything. I know some places like in the Carolinas, they don't, they don't have snow plows or salt or anything. So when they get one or two inches, they just shut everything down. My Dollar Tree's been doing pretty good lately with having, till you have to shovel, yeah, right? The Great Lakes. My Dollar Tree has been having more and more fabric. It, I guess I'm like the only person that buys it because I'll go in, let's say I go on on November 1st, right? And I'll pick up one of each kind of the fabric I go back in on December 1st and the fabric pile looks about the same. So I guess unless I buy it all, they're not going to have more shipped in. I've tried looking for like quilting groups here and everything and they have, we have one quilt shop in my entire county and it's a tiny one, but they don't have many groups or anything. They have some things you can sit in for classes. 2 feet to stop the oh, in Wyoming I would imagine Yeah, if I went anywhere snowy, I have never ever driven in snow. We lived in upstate New York for about a year and a half, so through basically two winters, but I wasn't allowed to drive in it. We didn't have a car when we were there. We borrowed Rob's mother's car, my mother-in-law, but since I'd never driven in snow, I wasn't allowed to drive it. I would definitely need a class. I told a few people too, like even down here, you'd think it'd be perfectly fine. You're just driving. So what if it rains, if you're used to snow and, and ice and stuff like that, you can drive in Florida. But we have these, these shell roads and there's like a lot of oil in it, plus the oil from the cars. So if it rains, it really kind of turns into almost like black ice. You never know when you're going to hit one of those oil patches and your car is just going to slide. You see a lot of people that aren't used to driving here, they, you know, they spin out and everything like that. Don't expect it to be bad. My aunt is by the lake in Sun Sundusky and Rob's sister lives on Lake Ontario in New York and they, you know, they get the, the what, the lake effect and stuff. They're, they didn't get as much snow as we were right by Fort Drum, the army base. And man, they got a lot of snow there. It was cold. I had a 
imagine you have to. You'd have to learn how to drive in that black ice. You have to know, you know, hit the brakes, don't hit the brakes, turn into it, turn out of it. Down here they have driver's ed during the school year. And you take turns, your class is like either 45 minutes or an hour and a half if you do block scheduling. And my kids, they all took it because you get a discount on your insurance and you don't have to take the driver's test at the driver's license place. So it's quicker. But you might only drive like two or three times in the year. Everything, you definitely have to have your parents teach you how to drive. A foot to a foot and a half predicted. My dad suggested I get going if I wanted a white Christmas. <laughs> I like seeing the snow. I think when the snow is on the trees and it's all new, it's all so pretty. But the reality is, is I don't have to live in the snow. So, it, of course, it's going to look pretty to me. I don't have to shovel it. I don't have to drive in it. I imagine there's a lot of people still traveling this Christmas, but there's going to be a lot that are staying home which is nice, especially with this storm that's up there and getting all that snow. Keep you from having to drive in it. Okay, yeah, I mean, the snow, when it's on the trees, it's so pretty. And when it's that, you get that first one and it's all nice and white before anyone comes through and plows it and it makes it all slushy and stuff like that. My kids, let's see, Robbie was two when we went to New York. So Mandy was 10 and Justin was 13. And they were riding snowmobiles and they were just playing in the snow. I didn't see them from sun up to sun down. They were gone all the time, playing with the kids in the neighborhood. They had a good old time. I learned as a mother, different than being a kid, because I moved to Florida when I was 13. And I learned you definitely need more than one pair of mittens and one hat and one scarf. Nothing ever dried in time. Snow pants and snow shoes are very important. The kids would take Robbie. As I said, Robbie was like two or three years old. I think he was three when we moved down, so he was like two to three in that age. And they would make him chairs because he'd want to go out and play with them. And we couldn't always be there all the time. And they were just playing in the backyard or the front yard or whatever. So they would cut out bowls and they would make chairs for him to put in. And they put him in there. And he'd be up on the top of the big mounds where they were when they shoveled the roads and you get that big mound in the yard. So they'd make him a chair to sit in so he couldn't get out. So they could still play in the snow and have snowball fights and keep an eye on it, their little brother. And he was outside playing for, you know, half an hour or something and he was happy, but he couldn't go anywhere. Well, that was the smartest things they thought of. Keep their brother locked up so they didn't have to deal with him. I've been watching embroidery and beading programs on Craftsy. I'm feeling that bug again to get some embroidery stuff done. And not just this, I mean, it's like red work. If this was supposed to be done on a white fabric with red thread, but I wanted to go this way. My grandmother knitted our mittens as kids. We used to double them up when playing outside. If I were to live in the snow now, I would definitely do those either thrummed mitts where they have that extra bit of wool worked into it or the double layers where you can have, you have your outside mitt and the inside one. And definitely you have to use wool up there. I mean, I was just using, you know, basic red heart and stuff because it was inexpensive, but yeah, I can see why wool would be important. Double hats, double mittens. Yeah, I like the way this one just pops a little bit more. Plus, I already have the snowman. I'll bring him back over since I found him. 
I have the snowman and he's on a beige background. At least I think this is a snowman. I didn't pull it out. But he's on a beige background, like a muslin with blue thread. So I thought it'd be nice to have Santa with red. I love to do blue work, black work, red work. Because it's so simple. You're just doing, you know, straight stitches with lines and stuff like that. So there's nothing to it. So these guys are going to be up somewhere. I'm hoping to have them, my goal is to have them both completely finished and turned into wall hangings in time for winter 2021. But this is the kind that's been calling my name, working on the more intricate ones with the different designs. So I have these that need to get turned into something. These hearts are really sweet. This is when I was practicing the different stitches and stuff like that. I need to find an encyclopedia with all the different stitches just to keep on hand so I can design a few things. And then this is my cardinal where I colored it in with some crayon and then did the specific color to go with it. I think he looks really good with the green batik. I just haven't gotten to that. Thank you. I love the snowman. I think he's really cute. And I found another one that needs to be finished with snowmen. Snowmen are my thing. I like snowmen. I like a Santa that's kind of like this. I like scarecrows. So what I found... If you guys been here for a while, you've seen this already. These snowmen. So I need to finish these guys up too. There's not that much left on it. I've got most of the tree done. So I just need to work on the border and this section over here and then they can get framed and put into something. And this one is from Crabapple Hill Studios. It took me a long time to figure out where it was from, but it's a discontinued one that you can't see anymore. But there's two little snowmen down here. You can just see his jacket and this guy's scarf. And then they have a snowflake like a kite. So I thought that was really cute. But like you guys know, you all have the same thing too. You know, so many projects that you want to do and not enough time to get them all done. And the crumbs, I need to start working on crumb blocks again because I'm getting overrun by scraps and they're calling my name. Just that rhythmic thing of just sewing them. And of course my crumbs, not everyone would agree they're crumbs. They're more like scraps because I like to work with bigger pieces. I don't like to work with those little itty bitty tiny things for a quilt. I like to do them with the cards and stuff like that, which I need to make more cards too. Nope, never enough time. I also feel the urge to rearrange my craft room here. Oh no. I'm not sure if what I'm going to do is going to work, but we'll see. I like, I have the table going this way, and I'd like to turn it this way to see if I can just. I don't know if it's going to give me any more room. I mean, the table is the same length no matter which way you turn it, and the room is 10 by 10 no matter how that works. I get this urge probably once a year just to rearrange the furniture somewhere and I really can't do it in the rest of the house because of the way the layout is. Yeah, Becky, got a problem with that, huh, huh, huh? I did rearrange it and I like to test it out for a while to see how it's going to work. I know there's a couple things I need to do. I purchased myself a new TV as a Christmas gift and I have it on one of those folding tables right over there. 
And then I have a desk, just like a little kid's desk. It's a little white desk with drawers down the side and a pen drawer here. You've probably seen it. I'm going to do another studio tour because I'm going to rearrange things at least. And I want to take the TV, I want to take the desk from here and put it there. And take this table and put it there. So the TV's sitting on something sturdier and not on a craft table that has a little bit of a bow in it. Plus, I iron. I do all my ironing on the desk. And I have a fan and my my bottles of water and stuff like that. I'm thinking the table's bigger. I'll have more room to spread out a little bit. So I wanted to do that. And then I thought if I took my desk from this way and put it this way, I can sew here, right, facing the TV. And if I put my cutting area, I can put it at the end of the table so it's not right next to where I'm sewing. Because right here, I'm like, you know, I'm, my sewing machine is... 25 inches from the end of the table, and I have my cutting mat here. So I thought if I turn my cutting mat to the end of the table, I can stand at the end of the table, and I give myself, give myself more room to sew. So we'll see. There's only so much I can do, but I do want to, now that I'm finding more of my scrap system and what works for me, I want to go ahead and rearrange some of the bookcases and put them all. I can put most of the bookcases into the fabric room, the extra bedroom. That way I'd only have in here in my craft room in the studio the ones that I'm actually going to use. So the extra things that have other things like extra bindings and the ribbons and stuff like that, they can all go in the other room because I don't use those every day. And I can just keep a couple of bookcases in here with my scraps. So as I'm cutting and working, they don't pile up on that extra table by the TV and sit there forever until they fall over and I have to finally put them away. If it's right here in the room with me, there's a better chance that I'll actually put it away as I go. Just because I find it so much neater and I actually use what I have instead of looking for yardage and cutting into something, I'll actually use the scraps. I rearrange my craft room like other people clean their craft room a couple times a year. I don't know. You can't move all the time, so you may as well just move your furniture around, right? Plus, I'm wearing a spot in the carpet right where I sit here at the cutting table because I do more computer work sitting here than I do any other things. So the carpet's starting to get a little worn out there. And it's easier to move the furniture than it would be to move the carpet because it's an area rug but it's big enough to cover almost the entire 10 by 10 room. It took me a long time, Becky, to have the craft room and I used to just be wherever and it made it harder to find what you needed and use what you already have and stuff like that. So I'm really lucky. I mean, it took everyone moving out. Yeah, less expensive too. It took everybody moving out of the house and, you know, all the kids moved into their own place. This room is Robbie's room. The fabric room is Justin's bedroom. I gave uh, Miranda's bedroom to the cats. So they, they're, they're in there. Plus I have extra storage and stuff in there. But mostly I just have like all their different houses that they like to lay in and, you know, the litter box and stuff. So it's just not right out into... Not to the open, although I still have things for them in this room here because they have to hang out with me. There's at least one cat with me all day. They're not with me now because they don't like when I talk to myself. So anyone going to learn a new craft next year? I've got all my supplies for wet felting. I got some more stuff that came in. I put it somewhere for safekeeping, obviously. I don't know where I put it. But I got some more colors for needlework, uh, needle felting. And I got the, the little styrofoam thing. And I got the special needles and the little leather thimbles so I don't stab myself. Yeah, you may as well, right? If it's just the two of you, you may as well have a giant craft room. The reason I wouldn't do something like that for me is because of the cats. Now, the craft room wouldn't be a problem 
but all the stuff I need to be able to close the door because the cats get into everything. Oh, I definitely will. I've been waiting for a couple of the supplies to come in. And I just, I'm going, I think the first project that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I need to pick up some nice soap. I don't want to, I have the stuff to make handmade soap too. I just haven't done that yet either. I, I buy all the supplies so that when I have the money or I find a sale on it, then I go ahead and I buy the supplies. And whenever I have time, then eventually I'll use it. Oh, yeah, see, I want to do wet felting. It just looks like so much fun, Brenda. I bought stuff thinking I was going to make stockings, but that didn't happen. So then I saw that you can make a phone case when you wet felt it for your little, for your cell phone to go in. I thought that was really cool. And you could do it over a big ball balloon thing to make purses. And then I thought I'd start out simple, though, and do it over the soap where you can do the wet felting right over the soap. So you take your bar of soap into the shower and it's got the washcloth already attached to it. The only thing left that I would like to purchase before I get into that is I've been looking for a tablecloth, a vinyl or nice plastic tablecloth, just to cover the table to help contain some of the water mess and stuff. I mean, I can do it on towels but I'd like to also have a tablecloth underneath. They should have some Christmas ones going on sale soon. Might be able to find something at Walmart. I just haven't been to the store very often. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I thought these craft and chat with me videos is really good because I don't have to give you a tutorial. You can just hang out and watch what I'm doing. And if you learn something great, well, well wet felting, I did check the dollar store. I bought one before, but they don't have any now. Let me see if I can get a definition for wet felting so, or if someone else has one. You're basically taking loose, wet felting is a process that involves soap, water, wool, and the friction and pressure of your hands uh, to create felt. Okay, yeah, so you're basically creating felt. You're taking like the, the fibers. Let me see what I have. Talk among yourselves. Okay. So here is some of the stuff that I bought previously. For any of you that are knitters that you know when you spin wool and stuff like that, right from the sheep and all that, when they dye it, that's the same material. So you have all these different fibers and they kind of pull apart like this. And I am, hold on. Are we good? Cause you guys can, my home internet, it looks like my phone is doing good, but my, where I'm watching you with all, all the chat and stuff is going crazy. Okay, so these are, you can like, I don't want to mess with them too much, but you can see they pull apart. They're very fibrous and they come apart like this. And you use soap and water and you do this whole friction thing and all this stuff like this. And then it turns into a piece of felt, like not like the acrylic stuff you buy at Michael's, but actual like real felt and stuff like that. Girlfriend gave me one of those soaps. She knew it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's just exactly what's doing. My home internet, I lost all of my chat and stuff and I had the spinning wheel, but my phone is on Verizon, so it's a wholly, totally different thing. If we had to go by my home internet, we wouldn't be able to go live. But thanks, Becky. Yes, yeah, so exactly, the, the whole the soap, I've been watching videos on YouTube just for fun. They're very relaxing. I see them on Instagram and you just kind of go over bubble wrap, you go over pool noodles, and you just kinda, and you can make those balls like this and stuff. It just looks like so much fun. For those of you that watch Kate from the last homely house, east of the sea or whatever, she did one for her granddaughter. She made a Christmas stocking. Now I've heard of the needle felting and the wet felting before, but it didn't really pique my interest. And then, I saw her make that stocking for her granddaughter and I'm like, oh yeah, no, no, I've got to do that craft. I, I need that craft in my life. I also have my paper making stuff. 
that I was looking at this morning, I'll probably do a craft and chat. I'll do a voiceover with that because you got to use a blender a lot. So that'll be fun. But my goal is I'm trying to get myself organized. I'm getting my scraps organized. I'm trying to organize my brain as much as I can. I've got different notebooks. I'm trying, I've tried them throughout the year, a different way to keep myself going so I don't lose track of days and times and what I'm doing, what I want to do. So I'm consolidating into just certain notebooks. So I got little sections, like three subject notebooks so I can keep track of what's going on. Cause I want to get my videos done for you guys ahead of time. And that way, if I can get right now, I'm trying, I'm always playing like catch up. I can get my videos done and I get all the editing in, but I end up spending like Monday through Thursday or Friday doing all YouTube and Patreon stuff. And that just leaves me the weekend to craft. I feel like I have a 40 hour a week job or a 50 hour a week job. But if I can like do a whole bunch of videos in just a couple days, cause right now I'm like, Hmm, what kind of video do I want to do on Friday? Well, it's Wednesday. I probably should figure that out. Huh? But if I'm making a list of different videos that I'm interested in doing and that you guys have requested. So that I'm going to take like January and I'm just going to knuckle down and I'm going to make a ton of videos and get myself ahead so that I can have fun doing these craft and chats and I can work on all different projects and you guys can have like background noise and extra videos instead of just your basic tutorial and your Whip It Wednesday. Kind of a little, you know, what's going on in the craft room and a peek into stuff like that. And that way I can get projects done instead of just kind of wondering, what should I do? What should I do? So for January's live stream, if you were here on Saturday, the requests are, excuse me, to make those pot holders for Valentine's Day that are shaped like a heart. You kind of put your hand in each of the little lobes like this, so it's, it's a pot holder that folds. So we're going to do that. And also a couple people want to do the jelly roll race. So I've been looking at jelly rolls. I can make my own. Thank you, Kathy. I can make my own. But then I was thinking, you know, it might be fun to just buy a jelly roll. So if I can get a jelly roll and get it here in the house, we'll probably do that on the January 16th one. Otherwise we'll do it in February. So if anyone wants to do a jelly roll race quilt with us and we can do it live to see if anyone, to see when people can get it done, you know, how long it takes. So we could be here for a couple hours. We're going to stay as long as it takes me to get the jelly roll done. And then everyone can leave a comment and let us know how long it took them to get it done. And technically we could have a Christmas quilt or at least the top done for next year, or we can have a quilt ready for someone's birthday or whatnot. You get a quick, quick quilt done. I've made a couple jelly, ra jelly roll race quilts. I don't remember how long they took me, but they took me a while. A lot of YouTubers do it, you know, it's like a thing, let's all just do a jelly roll race together, so it'll be fun. Yeah, I love those heart pot, uh, heart pot holders too, Tracy. They've always, they've always been so cute. You can also make them to kind of look like ladybugs. So I thought that, okay, okay, when someone suggested that, I thought that's a great idea, and we can have them done, we do them in the beginning of January, which would be January 2nd then that would give us plenty of time to have them and use them for Valentine's Day. And then, yeah, the 2nd and the 16th of January. Everyone got their new calendars for next year? I picked mine up. I like to have a couple of them. I like that they come with those little calendars that come with them too. I have to have one here all the time. Yeah, I mean, you can make your own jelly roll. It's not that, you know, you're just using whatever size strips you want, two and a half inch strips, cut it from your fabric. But I'd like to have something. Kona calendar. That's got to be colorful. I think I have, I probably have sunsets and something else. I tend to buy sunsets or sunrises. And yeah, I think I had horses one year. I don't know why I had horses. I 
do like the Kona cotton fabrics. If, if I want just a solid color, that's where I'm going to go. It seems to be very, very steady and even all the way across. Like every time I buy black from them, it's going to be the same black. My black is going to match your black and everyone else's. Because sometimes if you just go and get a black from like Joann's or whatever, you can get it a couple different times and the, the value of the color and stuff is just not always the same. It's like you can have a little blue black or a little gray. It's a little faded looking. So you have to be careful. Look at that, chatting away. Yep, only black. Yeah, specifically black and white. If I'm going to get those two colors, I'm going to get Kona. The other colors I don't mind too much, but if it's solids, it's just so much nicer to get theirs. You're going to pay a little bit more, but you're paying for the quality, so why not? There, I've got one strand done. I put a yard of floss in, plus. Knock on wood, just two little knots that I was able to get out. Oh, Missouri Star. I didn't even think about looking for calendars for them. I mean, I just hit the Dollar Tree around, well, I think it's around maybe Halloween. They have their calendars out. I like to have the nice little square so I can write into one. I need one in the kitchen area for doctor's appointments and stuff. And then I have one in here that I just scribble all over. Yeah, Riley Blake. I, I've never tried Riley Blake. I don't know. I'm very brand loyal. Once I find something I know I like and that works for me, I just kind of stick with it. I know Riley Blake, Riley Blake has a lot of nice fabrics anyway. It's a good quality. I just got a notification from YouTube. Does anyone watch the, the quilt show with Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms? Ricky Timms is, I guess he's stuck up on a mountain in his cabin or whatever. So he's doing shows up on the mountain. And since he's not going into the studio, oh my goodness, he looks so different. Oh, you treated yourself. Nice. If You know, it's this is one of those years where it's just good to treat yourself and get yourself something nice. Hubby's a car guy, so that's what we have, yeah. Yeah, so some of mine aren't very heavy. They're like thinner than sheets and stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to use those for whatever. They're not bad if you're going to use it maybe in a small zip pouch or something like that. But if I'm going to use it in a quilt and stuff, I want a good quality fabric. There's not a lot of things that I'm picky about, but there are a few. It's a good thing Christmas is coming and going pretty soon, though, because I did a lot of, you know what, I'm just going to treat myself for Christmas and give myself this. It's all right. It's just a Christmas gift for myself. No problem. I just get it for myself, right? It's been a bad year. Let's treat ourselves. I'll come up with another excuse next year. I also made a list of projects that I want to make for next year, just for fun. We'll see how many of those I actually get done. I'm trying to figure out things to put into the shop too.
Your 63 Barracuda is Miss January 2021. Nice. Okay, I'm totally lost. You have to tell me who makes a Barracuda and what color is it? Cause I'm not sure I know, I know the name of course, but I'm not sure if I know what it looks like. I think it's great that so many people, they have their car clubs, like the VW club and stuff like that. I know, I'm right here on the computer. Let me look it up. Barracuda car. Oh, oh, okay. Plymouth Barracuda, two-door pony car, 1964 to 1974. Those are nice. I'm seeing a orange, a cranberry, and a lime green. That is, they are, those are nice looking cars. Hi Beverly, happy holidays. Pumpkin orange, oh my. Yeah, that would be nice. So I am looking at a pumpkin orange on Wikipedia. Um, oh, that's from the UK. Okay. But anyways, there's an orange car in the UK for $528,000. Yay, yay, yay. Merry Christmas, Bev. Go ahead, Beverly. I'm not sure how much longer we're going to be on. We've been on for about an hour now. Probably going to finish up soon so everyone can get off and do whatever it is they have left to do. Oh, the wind's picking up here. I have a package to open. Though I can't open the gifts inside, I can still open the package though, right? Well, I received a few gifts in the mail and they're like, I don't know if you open presents right away when you get them or if you wait till Christmas. I said, well, if nobody tells me to wait, then I'm gonna open them as soon as I get them. I'm here alone, nobody's gonna know. There's nobody here to tattle on me. I can't put Christmas presents underneath the tree because the, ta the cats will lay on them or tear at the packaging and stuff. They're sweet little things, but they're not, uh, <laughs> they're not all that well behaved there when it comes to that. A friend sent me a package and everything was wrapped and I was unwrapping it here on the table and Miss Whiskers, my big fat striped cat, she was laying up here on the table because she wanted to see and one of the packages was wrapped in tissue paper that she loved. So she was just rolling all around here playing with the tissue paper. Well, let's help Becky decide what kind of cookies. Did you see, just like... Apparently you have to make the chocolate crinkle cookies because everyone across the internet is making those. That seems to be the cookie of the year, even though they've been around forever. I want to make those and sugar cookies. But I decided that I am going to ice them, but I'm just going to, I'm not going to color the icing. I'll just use plain white. It's just me. And I, the only dyes that I have here are the ones that are full of all the, the red dye this and the blue dye that. And I'm trying to avoid some things, right? I'm trying to keep things a little bit better. So the colors don't matter to me. Wow. No, my cats would lay, they would be nice, but they would lay in between and move things around. Sugar cookie hack cookies. I don't know what that is. I was thinking about making my own eggnog. I haven't been able to buy any dairy-free eggnog this year. 
I found a really simple recipe that just uses cashews and coconut milk. So I might try that. Oh, your Christmas cactus is blooming. Woohoo! Those are temperamental, I've heard. I've never had one. Budge. I made the chocolate peanut butter no bake oatmeal ones the last week or so. I made pumpkin bread just to get me through to have some. I like to have a little bit of something to snack on. A little something before bed. Sue is done. She's had enough. No more cookies for you. I have a Dr. Mario mug. This is from 1988. I've had this forever. It's one of my favorite mugs. When I find something, I hold on to it. I plan on making, hopefully this afternoon, I'm going to make a jello poke cake is what we called it. My grandmother made it for Christmas every year. It's where you make the white cake. She made hers in rounds with two tiers. And after it's done, you take the back of a wooden spoon and you poke the holes in it. And then you pour jello on it. Or you could put pudding in it. She did red jello for one layer and green jello for the other. And then you smother it all with Cool Whip. I haven't had that forever and I'm kind of feeling a little nostalgic this year and I'd like to have that. So I picked up the picked up some jello and I picked up some dairy-free cool whip or cocoa whip it's called. Grandmother's fudge, cinnamon cookies. Oh, Bob, that sounds good. I like anything where you can cheat like that. Tiramisu. All right, Beverly, enjoy your chicken soup for dinner. Right, Brenda? I mean, we used to have it all the time, but we haven't had one in years. My grandmother passed away in 2000, 2001. And I think I've made it once or twice since then. But it's like, it wouldn't be Christmas without it back then. But everything has changed so much. All the people that we, we used to do Christmas Eve at my parents, first at my grandparents' house growing up. And then after we moved down here, we did it at my parents' house. We'd have the big bonfire. You'd eat food for hours and hours. The guys would all drink too much. Kids would wrap, unwrap all their presents from the family and grandma and grandpa and stuff. It'd be a big party. And then on Christmas Day, everyone would just stay home and relax. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna make one. I, I didn't. I can't get a cake mix because they all have either soy oil in it or milk or something like that. So I'm just gonna make a homemade one. Making a white cake is not that difficult. And then I've got the green and green and red jello, and I got two containers of the cocoa whip because they're pretty small, and I want to make sure I have enough Cool Whip to put all over it. I thought, yep, that's what I'm gonna have this year, and I'm not gonna share it with the kids. I might not even tell them I made it. My daughter went cookie crazy the other day. She made cookies for everyone at work. She loves to bake cookies. Just don't ask her to make, she can make food. She just, she enjoys the baking part of it more than the cooking part of it. All yours, yep. I mean, okay, if I just have a slice a day and it lasts for like a week or so or whatever, I don't think cake goes that bad. It may dry out a little bit, but just put more extra Cool Whip on it, right? I'm a grown-up. I can have cake for lunch, cake for dinner, one of those. I might even have cake for breakfast. At, 
this point in my life, I loved cooking and baking for the family and doing all that. But after a while, as they got older, and I just, I just got tired of it. And while I enjoy it, I just stopped doing it. And now if it's just me, it's like, what am I, I can only do so much. Like, okay, I made a giant turkey for Thanksgiving and all the fixings. I made myself TV dinners. I still have, I think, three or four in the freezer. Made a giant ham. That's why fridge were invented, exactly. It's funny, if I make, let's say I made, we'll just make something up. I wouldn't make a lasagna now, but if I made a lasagna, the requirements for me is it has to be eaten in five days or you have to put it in the freezer. But a cake now, a cake can last for seven or ten days in the fridge and it's perfectly fine. I don't think cake with all that extra stuff and sugar and all that, I don't think it goes bad. It just gets dried out. Cooking is fine because you can just make things up as you go along. You don't have to follow as many rules. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Man must have wrote that. Yeah, no, women don't always like to cook. It's, it's like you enjoy cooking for fun, but when you have to do it all the time, and you have to decide what you're going to eat this week, and then you've got to cook it and deal with all of that, you're just like, you know what? I'm fine. Peanut butter jelly sandwich sounds good to me. It's got protein. Right, that exactly, Lynn. So a lot of times I will make large amounts of something. I will still cook for my family of five, even though I'm the only one that's doing it. <laughs> exactly, Tracy. The jello gives it extra moisture, so you're good. Plus the cool up covers it. Maybe the cool up might get a little crunchy on the outside. Scrape it off, put fresh stuff on, you're good to go. But I, I cook still for a family of five, planning on leftovers for a couple of meals. And then now it's just me, so it's like I can get like 10 meals out of it or something. And then I only have to cook once. I only have to go through that struggle once. So once a week or once every, every two, uh, twice a week or something, I'll just make a whole bunch of food, one big meal. Like I have Thanksgiving dinner in the freezer. I've got chili in the freezer. Now I'm going to have ham. And then I'm going to make some butternut squash soup. So then I won't have to cook. I can just reheat a lot in the next few weeks. Because you know, you're, you're making that mess with all the dishes. You're wearing yourself out doing all that cooking. I would, Beverly. It's going to make your house smell delicious. And your mom's going to think you're amazing because you brought home bread. Plus, you spend a little bit of money, or well, you spend not, not a little bit, you probably spend a lot of money now buying all the groceries, and then you're not going to spend any money or have to go to the store for a while. And when you do go to the store, you're just going to run in and out for milk, bread, eggs, or vegetables or whatever. Yeah, I don't, I've not heard anyone say, please, no, don't bring any homemade bread to my house. I don't want any. Beverly, she's just going to be happy to see you, whether she knows it's Christmas or not. I know it's sad that they don't know what day it is, and half the half time, a lot of people, they don't even know their relatives or something. But you're going to bring her that little bit of joy for that one little moment while she's enjoying her cookies and her homemade bread, and she'll be happy. Alright guys, it's been a little bit over an hour. I think I'm going to let you all go. Thanks for hanging out with me today and keeping me company. Hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas. Everyone stay safe. Be happy. I know most of us here are just kind of rolling with it this year. That we just, it is what it is and we'll figure it all out and go with it. And then we'll next year maybe it'll be better you know we'll all have Christmas in July next year or something like that I know they were saying everything should be in better shape by like Easter so we'll see but for those of you in the snow be careful careful walking around it's all slippery 
Yeah, we made it to Christmas. I mean, it seems like this year lasted for three years, but we've made it. You guys, like I said, you'll have a video tomorrow. It's nothing exciting. It's just something to fill in the space to give you a little bit of something in case you're looking for something to watch. It's not a tutorial, so you'll be okay there. If you miss it, you miss it. It's no big deal. It'll be there. Thank you, Sue. It'll be there for you guys later if you want to catch it. I will be back. Let me look at my calendar. So I will be back for the Whip It Wednesday on Wednesday, and then again on New Year's Day, I'll do that. What I've started, you know, what I've started with knitting while I'm making it. Let me show you the patterns and all that stuff. So we'll have that for New Year's Day, and then we'll get back on track with our regularly scheduled program. For those of you that are listening that are not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the random craft and chat with me videos that are going to be coming up. I'm just going to make them whenever I make them and post them when I post them so you won't know when they show up until they do. If you're subscribed and you ring that little bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I put out a video. Woohoo, Becky, you got some done. Oh, Beverly, I want to make some crocheted gnomes, I want to knit some gnomes, and I want to make some gnome wall hangings. I want all the gnomes. I've always loved gnomes. I'm glad they're popular right now. Miss Smorzies is over behind me glaring at me. Yes, everyone be safe. I'm standing up to turn off the video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Merry Christmas. Eat all the cookies and cake you want because Christmas cookies and cake don't have calories. Bye.